Welcome back to another episode and in today's video when we get close to some specific point where we have a zombie it's going to come out of the ground and morph itself into a fully grown zombie. Now obviously this thing has many different applications uh, but well I'm going to show you how to set up the morph keys to make sure that we can get this this exact effect. So let's get started. So this tutorial actually will not start in Unreal Engine 4. Instead, I have the Mixamo site open and what I'm going to do is actually go ahead and download a quick character. So for this video, let's say we pick this zombie right here. This looks a little dark. This one could be good as well. Uh, sometimes it glitches out. It doesn't show it for me. I need to refresh, but it's there. So I'm just going to download it. Now the next part of this video is going to happen in Blender because we actually need to make our morph target. So I'm going to hit A to select everything and delete key. Now be warned, I'm not the greatest when it comes to modeling and Blender and all that stuff. So uh, probably a lot of you will be able to make a lot of better results with this. So I'm going to go ahead and import the FBX, which is our zombie screen that we just downloaded. So let's import that one. And what I'm going to do is uh, let's go ahead and first, I believe for Mixamo, we have a modifier. So let's select our mesh. Let's go to the modifier and we need to apply this armature modifier. Otherwise, we're going to have some bad results with this. Now, this is all good. Now we can go ahead and select this thing, which is the object data properties. And it has the section of the shape keys. So let's click it twice because the first time it adds this master thing, some kind of, and then it adds the actual shape key, which in Unreal is called morph key. So I'm going to call this flat because we're going to make this guy flat. And then it's going to like kind of come out of the ground essentially. So once we have done this again, let's make sure we select our mesh, hit tab. And now we can start editing this guy. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to press S and then Z to scale this in the Z axis. And I'm going to make this very, very flat. Something like that seems to be good. Then I'm going to hit G and Z to move it down. So I'm going to grab and move it down. I'm going to move it below the ground. So it basically would be invisible at first. So then when we hit tab back, we get our character back in the object mode. We are back to the default and now we can adjust this value. And whenever we do, you will see that this guy goes below the ground. And that's basically it for the Blender part. We have created our very simple uh, morph shape key. And obviously you can have a lot of different applications for this. So let's go ahead, let's export this. And I'm going to leave the default settings. Probably could be something, something could be better or whatnot, but I'm going to leave it be. There we go. So we have exported that. Now let's go ahead and let's import this into Unreal. So uh, this is so this is how it should look for you. If you don't have the skeletal mesh checked, if it looks like this, make sure you check the skeletal mesh. And then we have a couple of properties that we need to uh, enable because here in the show advanced, I think that by default, the import morph targets is at false. So make sure this is true. Otherwise, it's not going to import any morph target targets at all. And there is another thing under the animations show advanced. We have the do not import curves with only zero values. So now I believe that if in Blender or whatever other modeling software you're using, I think if this value is not zero by default, I think uh, then it's not going to import the morph key. So I have this set to true. I think by default, this was false. I might, I might be wrong on this one, but uh, I have it at true basically. So with these settings being enabled, we're going to hit import and wait a couple of seconds for the model to be imported. Okay. So the model has been imported. And now if we open this up, we have the morph target preview. If you don't have it, uh, here is where you can enable it under the window section. And then we can go ahead and move this slider and you will see him disappear under the ground. Now it's going to need to recompile the shaders and it's going to ask you to resave these materials for the morph targets to work properly. Uh, we're going to do that in a second. But uh, once I import these things from Blender, they, the materials usually are super shiny. So you can see the, the model is very, very shiny and I don't want it to be that shiny. So we're going to do some adjustments in the textures and we're going to resave those. So I'm going to open up both of the materials move these out a bit and let's see what's wrong with this thing 
So it's very, very shiny and that's because of the roughness map. So I'm going to actually disable this and add a constant of one to make this rough, something like that. So hopefully that way uh, the material is going to look a little bit better. There we go. And I'm going to apply exactly the same logic for this one as well. I'm going to do constant of one. I'm just holding keyboard key one down and left clicking to create the constant and connect the roughness. You can always right click and look for a constant. And I'm using the regular one for this one. Okay, let's resave this as well. And we are good with the material. So now our zombie is no longer as shiny. So it should look a little bit better. Now, obviously you can always adjust everything to your liking. Now let's save our mesh as well. And now let's make sure that we can actually implement this into our level. And to do so, I'm going to right click in the content browser and create myself a new blueprint class of a character type. And I'm going to call this zombie. Let's open this up. And for the mesh, let's select our tutorial zombie. This guy right here. I'm going to move it down like so. Should be good. Okay. So first and foremost, we need to make sure that by default, this guy is flat. Now, back in our, uh, back in our skeletal mesh, uh, we can see that it's flat whenever the morph key is set to one. Now our morph key's name is flat. That's the one that we provided in the blender. So we got to make sure that we remember this. So flat needs to be at one by default. So at the very beginning. Now, if we just change this one, it's, it doesn't work. So we got to do that in the blueprint. So on the construction script, for some reason, it also doesn't work. But on the event graph on begin play, we can get it to work. So let's grab our mesh and let's set morph target this one right here here we go let's select the morph target called the name is flat and the value is at one there we go let's bring a couple of these inside of our level just to have a look so we can have three of these and we're gonna have a bunch of issues so we hit play everything seems to be good they're invisible but well they still have their own collision so let's make sure that we disable that now back in our zombie, the collision happens from the collision capsule. So we can scroll down. So we find the collision section and we can go ahead and change this to overlap all. Now by doing so, if we hit play, look at the actors 39 and there's 33 because those guys just got deleted. I guess some other actors got deleted as well uh, because we only had three. Uh, so well, those are gone, but we want them to stay there. So we got to make sure that we also go ahead and disable the gravity. So if we select our character's movement, we're going to set our gravity scale to zero by default. So that's good. That's not enough though, because if we hit play now, we can walk through this, but you can see there is something wrong with our camera. Something's interfering with our camera. And that is the actual character mesh itself. So I'm going to go ahead and set the meshes collision to custom and I'm going to go ahead and ignore the camera camera channel. So this way now everything should be good. They should be invisible and the character uh, actor count in the level in the world outliner should stay at 39 for me, which is good. Okay. Now we got to make sure that now we set up some kind of a code which actually regrows our zombies back to their original state. Now for that we can right click and look for a timeline. I'm going to leave the default name. Obviously you can rename that. But I'm going to double click this and I'm going to say length of this is going to be 3 seconds. So I want my zombies to be fully in the full size within 3 seconds. Now for that I'm going to add a flow track which is going to control the the size basically of our character so we're going to right click in it and we're going to add key to the curve float and we're going to select this key and we're going to set the time to be zero so at the very beginning of the timeline the value is going to be at one like this so our one is the one where he is flat fully and then we're going to right click once more add another key and then at the time three which is the end of the animation we want the value to be at zero, which is having the character be at its default state, which is this one right here. Okay, so that's what this timeline is for to calculate those numbers between zero and one. Now in the event graph on the update of the timeline, we can go ahead, and grab our mesh and we can do what we just did before. We can just set our morph target. 
So we're going to connect that to the update. And for the uh, morph target name, it is flat. And the value is the one that comes from our new track, which is going to get provided by our uh, timeline. So we're going to, for now, we're going to just connect these to the play. And you will see that now whenever we hit play, these guys are morphing into their original shape. Now, unfortunately, unfortunately, as you can see, well, we can still walk through these. So we need to do some more adjustments. Uh, so the things basically that we previously change, changed. So let's have a look what we actually changed. So we changed the preset to overlap all from the pawn. So let's leave it at overlap all. So I'm going to bring it in and I'm going to set collision uh, profile name. I'm going to do this by the profile name because we're going to use a pre-built uh, pre profile. And in this case, that one is the pawn. So we're going to call this pawn. There we go. Okay, that's good. Now, the next thing is to uh, re-enable gravity. So we're going to get this, our uh, character movement, and we're going to set gravity scale. And we're going to set it back to the default value, which was 1. Okay, so now basically whenever uh, the morphing is finished, whenever our character is back to its full size, it's going to re-enable its collision and re-enable its gravity. So we can hit play. There we go. And as you can see, we can no longer walk through these. Now, obviously, the characters are floating. You might be wondering uh, why the characters are still floating because, well, we enabled the gravity back. Well, that is because I don't have it adjusted here perfectly. So this one maybe should be a little lower. So now let's try this again. Uh, maybe it needs to be a little bit more lower, but for now it's going to be good enough. So you get the idea what's going on. Okay, so we have these guys. Now, we don't want them to just be flat and then grow whenever we start the game. We want them to grow whenever we come close, when, whenever we get near these. So I'm going to actually go ahead, grab these nodes, disconnect them, and I'm going to create another custom event, which whenever we run this, only then the character is going to grow. So I'm going to call this regrow zombie. Plug that into the play. And we are good with this one. That's all that we need for now. Now, we got to make sure that our capsule has the overlap all and it has the generate overlap events by default so that we can actually go ahead and interact with this. Because if you're going to ignore all the collision, we're not going to be able to interact with this. So we got to make sure this is overlap all and it does generate the overlap events. Because then inside of our third person character, we can initiate the interaction. And for this one, I'm going to do this very simple. I'm going to add a sphere collision to my character. And I'm going to scale this up a little bit. Something something like this should be good enough. And now in our event the graph, we can select our sphere, scroll down to the very bottom and do a on the component begin overlap event. So now whenever we're going to overlap some kind of an actor, uh, for this one, from the other actor, I'm just going to cast to the zombie. Now, obviously, interfaces are going to be a lot better for this one. But for just the sake of the tutorial, I'm going to make cast. And I'm going to go ahead and run our regrow zombie function event in this case. And then we can go ahead and hit play. As you can see, no zombies. And when we get near one, that one gets regrown, that one gets regrown, and that one gets regrown as well. And at this point, you could enable their blueprints, enable their hunting or whatever other mechanics that you would like them to. And they will start functioning as a fully functioning characters, uh, just like they would before. So I think this is really cool when you have like a pile of garbage or something or a puddle. And then this guy just comes out of there, creates itself. Obviously, there's a lot of different applications that could be applied for this one as well. So one more thing that I'm noticing is that I don't like is I can still walk through these, right? And then boom, I get kicked out of them. So what I'm going to actually do is just small adjustment. This node right here, set a collision profile name. I'm going to disconnect it from here. Instead, all I'm going to do on finished is re-enable the gravity. And I'm actually going to re-enable the collision uh, beforehand. So I'm going to do these nodes back. And I'm going to run this one first. So this is going to be the first task. I'm going to re-enable its collision. And then I'm going to do the rest. So hopefully that's going to do the trick. So let's try it again. 
There we go. Okay, so that's a lot better. That's a lot better. There we go. So yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. Hope you found this useful. Hope you learned something new. Uh, now maybe you will have some clues on how to enable this uh, for any other applications. Uh, not just the zombies coming out of the ground. There could be many, many different other applications for this. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be it for me today. Hope you enjoyed it. And I see you in the next one. Peace.